But we did it the other way because I didn't know too much about it. We were all sitting at the table brainstorming. So we are so excited that Zidal Buchanan is here with us again today to help us to understand a little bit more about how to to raise our own food and then bring it to the table. And uh, we're just getting that wonderful, healthy, whole circulation of ideas that go on in her head all the time about how, how to live off the land and how to bring it to your own table. Now, why do we do this at the Barclay Public Library? Because this is the Health Literacy Services Department of the Barclay Public Library. We're actually called Literacy Services. And one of the arms of what we do is helping Oklahomans become more healthy. Why in the world would we want to do that? Well, that's because we don't rate very high so these guys out there because we eat a lot of things we shouldn't be eating. And I have to admit to you that this was not my best week. I think I went to McDonald's four times. <laughs> so my natural audience here is not happy with me. My schedule, your schedules get to you. And there's not very many salads out there. So we've got to get better about preparing things in our own home and, and, and bringing it to our table. And uh, Zyla was just full of ideas, just full of ideas. And we also were talking about the idea that we're going to do cold press soap today from real natural pumpkin. And then Zyla is going to make pumpkin chicken soup. And we were talking about how did we get pumpkins in April? Because usually we do these recipes in the fall. But we decided that it was absolutely fate that we did this because it's a cold, rainy day in Oklahoma. And what could be better? than pumpkin soup. So that's what we're doing today, right? <laughs> it was. And so everybody who's here in our studio audience is going to get some free cold pressed pumpkin soup today. Yes. That's one of the little perks about coming on up to the library. And then we're also going to, going to, uh, to taste it and the soup and see how to make it. And we're just excited about you being here. So welcome to Homestead Cooking and natural living class. Thank you. Thanks everybody for coming out. And again, our every every month, I think the weather has a pendulum swing of what, what's going to occur. Um, fortunate for us, we learned our lessons uh, year over year now and the, the progression of gardening, um, it seems like the window keeps changing where typically I would have already had my tomatoes and bell peppers in the ground. Um, now it's being pushed further and further out because we keep getting these last minute ice I'll say cold spells, and if you know anything about your seedlings, they do not tolerate that. They shrivel up and die. So, um, so for this week, it kind of was applicable to have some soup. And we sat down and we put this menu together, you know, earlier this year. I think we were just so much brainstorming on so many variety of different ideas. Why we picked it, don't know, but it seems um, appropriate for today, nonetheless. So. Um, typically, guys, I know I, for us, I usually do everything holistic, meaning everything comes from the garden, um, but then from an essence from time and two from a supply chain, meaning I can't go to the store and, and get pumpkin. Um, we're actually going to do pumpkin from a jar. Um, but if we were to do this today you know, with pumpkin, we would actually cut open the pumpkin, we would seed it and cook it, and then strip the, uh, the nutrients within it and then puree it. So we would have a longer process to get uh, the full use of the pumpkin. Um, and what I have done, and here's what, what I do to keep up, especially during the um, fall season when there's tons of pumpkins and pumpkin season, there's your, you know, your kids have done jack liners or there's a, a plethora at the grocery store, and I'll go ahead and pre-cook up a whole bunch of pumpkins and then I'll puree them and put them in the freezer. My mother has been gracious enough to help me at times to take some of the gallon bags so that I have space for, for pumpkins for later. Um, and what I've also done, you know, from just an essence of time, is I will actually put them in ice cubes um, so that I have them in a certain ounce. So if I wanted to go, hey, I don't want to undo a whole entire, but I want just some, I can actually take the ice cubes on easier to break off, and then I have smaller consumption inside the larger bag. So this is actually pumpkin from this fall. Um, this is going to be the pumpkin that we're going to use for the soap making. Um, so one of the things we, you know, I, I bring up often is for use every bit of what we have. So if we have the pumpkin here, we could use the seeds to dry out. You could, you could um, salt them. You could sugar them to make them. They're a great nutrition snack. Um, also the the, uh, the rind of the pumpkin. It's a great for both composting. If you've got cows, chickens, pigs. And it all be reused. So your pumpkin from top to bottom can be completely recycled and reused. There's no reason for it to go 
struggle with this. I struggle with this. <laughs> so. If you want to follow along, these are actually the one that walks to you. Um, I this this recipe is this chicken. I would tell you that you can use you can use uh, pork, ground pork, ground turkey. You can use any other meat that you choose. The same way um, with the chicken in general. I'm going to actually just chunk the chicken. I'm just using the white bread to chunk the chicken. But you could use shredded chicken. You can use any other meat substitute that you want to put in there. If you want to use sausage, whatever your choice might be. Okay, so don't feel like, hey, it's limited to just the chicken. Okay. Yeah, you can make it completely vegetarian. You can do it completely vegetarian. That's the same way even with the vegetable choices. This is a, a, a traditional stock of carrots, celery, and onions. But if you wanted to come in and add, I will say, if you wanted beans, rice, if you wanted uh, peas or green beans, whatever, I think that you could, it's a, it's a traditional soup. I think you could add or change or modify it. The same way with even bringing in very simple ingredients, salt, pepper, garlic, um, we'll have some obviously some kind of flavors from the onion and the cilantro, but you can add in jalapenos to give it a little a little pop to it. You could add uh, some depending on if you want it to have more of the Mexican or if you want it to have more of Italian, you can do oregano or thyme. Uh, if you want it to be a spicy, you can go with more of an Indian. So you can add in other ingredients to give it a different flavor. You know what you like, but this is just a simple version of it, um, and I think that. Yeah, the weather has been so crazy. I uh, so not only I do this, but I also am on a kind of a homestead circuit for the season, uh, teaching permaculture classes and homestead classes um, across uh, some of our rural areas. And uh, last. Saturday, I was teaching a sky took and uh, a permaculture class. And of course, if you saw the weather uh, early Saturday morning, uh, you saw that it was not pretty at all. And uh, I had it set up in sort of like 30 mile an hour winds and uh, <laughs> get things set up and, and then hope that people actually showed up. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, we had, I probably had over two dozen people in the permaculture class. It had a approach of the coaches to have to have everybody come out and, and learn about uh, just different gardening techniques uh, despite the weather. And then um, this Saturday, I will actually be at uh, Plant Positive in um, Claremont, uh, and we'll also be teaching a permaculture class there uh, on Saturday. So if you guys are out and about, feel free to come by. I know the Master Gardener group here in Washington County will be having their plant sale the last weekend of, of uh, April at the uh, fairgrounds. So if you guys are interested in some local plants from our Master Gardener group, totally highly recommend going out to visit them. You'll find great prices and great quality from them as well. So if you haven't been, done your seedlings or have your seeds, next um, that will be coming out before you know it, and it'll be a great resource for you.
more caramely. They have, um, they're yellow, they're a deeper, darker color. The, the substance of it is so different. And I would say the same thing even with your meat sources. So like when uh, pork, we do our own pork, we do our own beef, we do all of that at the farm. Um, and the difference is so significantly different um, that you can actually eat a pork chop with a pork. You're not needing a knife. You, the, um, the marbling in your beef, things like that, you're, it's amazing the quality of difference between your grocery store and I'll say which you can grow in your backyard. I, people always ask me about, um, you know, your human capital and the time that it takes to raise your animals. And I go, it's, it's you know, goes back to the pocketbook. You know, you save money by raising it and doing it yourself and everything is organic. But you look at the grocery store, how many of you guys have gone out and bought a roast lately? $17.99 a pound, $19.99 a pound, we're paying $90 for a roast. And if you were to um, work with another um, farmer or rancher, you know, for a cow, you could split half a cow with someone and pay less than $5 a pound. And you would have 600 pounds of beef, and that would include steaks, New York strips, uh, um, ribs, every slice of beef you wanted, and you're paying way 25% on what the grocery store prices are. Obviously, you would have to have freezer space for it and things like that, but you can't go wrong um, in finding um, a, a reputable person in the community to buy locally your beef. The same thing with, I would say, with pork as well. Um, my boss, that lives in uh, Denver, Colorado, and he will be here in, I have a four pig going to uh, butcher, and he is coming from Colorado to buy to four pig. For, for what the price he can get a pig and coming here, it was well worth in his time investment. So, uh, another, another option for you.
garden party started.
to be prepared if I knew how many per each item had to be. So I'm not completely thinking it. But most of us, we're readers. You know, if you're like, oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you're not going, oh. anywhere from five to eight dollars for a bag this big. 
Ginger would be, I think, another really great opportunity. I mean, that movement gives it a pop, definitely. Um, that's another great alternative. I would probably agree with that. So we're now at the point is that we're just layering everything in, and then we'll let it simmer, and we'll move to the cold press. So. Make sure if you do buy the tin pan, do not buy your pumpkin pie mix. <laughs> if you do that, you're gonna, it still might be tasty, but it's not what you probably wanted, right? So just, <laughs> um, one of the uh, questions that was asked earlier is can you substitute your pumpkin? Absolutely. Um, you know, from our other classes, I am obsessed with butternut squash. I use it in the three sister shoes. I've done it for stuffed, stuffed squash, and you know, you could use a butternut squash as an alternative to this as well. Can you roast it before you cut it? I can't see that. I'm not strong enough to cut the butternut squash. So um, I let it cook. It has to cook a really long time to get where the skin is really thin. Um, so with butternut squash, you probably only need to cook for like an hour and a half. I don't just have to look at it kind of like a baked potato, how long you let it cook is how tender it's going to be. Um, and I do, and what I do um, specifically is I cook it face up and I didn't cook it face down so I can get, get that full heat on both sides to get where I get basically the meat of it out. That's what I've done. And it's it's still, still to change the taste, I can just get it cut so I can use it. Absolutely. Thing. 
finish the science project of it, you need about four weeks before you use the bar. Because the bar is soft, it will harden over time, and it also allows for it to, um, you won't have mine. It's going to finish out its science residuals, and it usually will harden up, and you won't have uh, blues, blues on it. So that's like getting in the, into your, uh, into your shower and having a soap scum and all of your soap has been degraded by the shower. Um, this right here, you won't get that as long as you um, give it time to cure. Um, the hot press method, the thing about the hot press method, you have to cook it, it's, a, it's available, you can use it immediately, a lot and everything that science is completely done as well. But you need another two or three days as well. I would, I would tell anyone to let them uh, make that hard enough as well so it has a longer, a longer use to it. The other thing about uh, soap in general is we're going to use a real super simple method. And just remind me, I forgot to put salt pepper in there. We're going to do this kind of thing. I almost forgot that too many things. Salt and pepper. Salt and
other thing too is if you ever make soap at home, it needs to be segregated from any other things that you use at home. So uh, if you use I bought these, you would not reuse them for anything else. These right here, I do not use them for anything else. I have a washer blender. I do not use it for anything but soap. It does not commingle with any of my food in the house. Not that I that I that it could. It's the possibility that it might. So just wisdom, I keep it totally segregated. You don't find anybody who does so uh, at all that they do the exact same thing. Do not blend, uh, blend your food in your soap. Uh, you can just stay out of your So since this is the heart, this is the piece here. It has to be melted down. directions it's all it's the same the olive oil and the coconut oil are pretty much the same uh, every single time you can change out the third oil it could be any kind of oil as long as it's a liquid form of oil and I don't know how much this is going to be but pop it won't melt it and break it down. So I have an avocado oil and a classic olive oil. 
during this time too, where you get to what we call spotification, that you could add other things into your mixture. This is your best friend right there, is if you had to actually sit there for 15 minutes trying to lift that by hand, uh, you wouldn't like it.
on Facebook, right, Cheryl? Yes. Cheryl's our admin executive, and she gets it all done. So those of you who are out in our audience by, via Facebook, um, you will have a chance to see that recipe just like all the people who are here in person are doing. So we want to mention to you again that Zyla will be back on May the 19th, and she's going to do predominantly a focus on tomatoes. Now, she told me today that even though we plant tomatoes, we don't give them to them too often. So, but she's going to show us some wonderful things about canning them. Uh, do you have any other things you know you're going to do? So, we're going to do a bruschetta, um, and we're going to do it with a, a spaghetti squash. So, we're going to we're going to talk about how to can it, but the bruschetta that we're going to make will also be the foundation for the coverage for our uh, pasta, our, our pseudo spaghetti pasta. So, once you learn how to make it, then you have it for later. Um, And will we be doing anything with salads? Yes, and we're going to be doing a cucumber tomato salad. So if anybody is like my grandmother, you had that cucumber tomato yummy goodness that's all in the refrigerator, we're going to be covering one of those as well. And we believe that in May it will be the beginning of hot weather in Oklahoma and <coughs> tomatoes will be so blessed and we're excited about that. So any other questions that we have right now before we close out the show? What is the word for like double the token? Double the line? Yes, everything um, on there, you can just double everything. Um, so you saw that the one recipe that I just did covered these six bars. So you just need to have enough, uh, either a second uh, six, six pack, or there's also uh, um, so close that you can do. So if you wanted to do it in two shades, you could do one, and then do a second with another color, and just layer it on top, and you'd be able to have 12 or more bars in a couple of them. And anybody else who has questions, she's available. We also want to mention to you that uh, there is a lot of information on our website under literacy services that has to do with our health literacy division of our program.